All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our 2.1 million dollar prop firm challenge across six different prop firms. Today, we discuss the most frequently asked questions since our USD Swiss franc trade triggered. How to manage this trade? How do I do trade management? And what to expect next on the Swiss franc? And by the way, it's really insane how many of you took advantage of this trade. If you follow me on Instagram, you must have seen it in my stories. You guys even passed challenges with only this trade. It's really insane, really insane. So I will obviously continue to document my $2.1 million challenge journey live, raw, unfiltered, and most importantly, before the action happens. So you guys can not only learn, but earn at the same time. Remember, it's a series. So if you haven't watched the first episode yet from last week, please do so. And I will quickly show you where to find it. So if you open my YouTube, if you open my YouTube, it's here from last week. I even created a challenge playlist, $2.1 million challenge documentary. And the video from last week is, this is how I analyze Forex charts with my trading strategy. So without further ado, let's get into the action. And again, we see here the USD Swiss franc Forex chart. And this is basically what happened. We rallied into our zone and then we dropped like a stone and everything so far is history. But well, before we go now into trade management, let's look at, because this is actually quite important because we want to know, well, how aggressively we want to manage this trade. So that's why we first need to see fundamentally what to expect next on the Swiss franc. And therefore, we first go into the futures chart. So remember, so why were we so bullish on the Swiss franc, right? So that's why we shorted the USD Swiss franc. We were so bullish on the Swiss franc because on the futures, the retailers were super, super bearish. And if we now just quickly see, and this is what I always do, by the way, as a routine, once it's Saturday, our Campus Smart Money Index is updated. And what I want to see is basically, has anything changed in retail behavior here in this case? And you see, this was last week. So from the week before to last week, we the retailers were a little bit, just a little bit more bullish just in an extreme still in that extreme though so very very bearish but now look what the retailers are doing look what the retailers are doing they are getting even more bearish compared to last week so what does this tell me what does this tell me ladies and gentlemen well the move is definitely not over so we can see continuation well we I expect continuation to the upside here on the Swiss franc futures. Now, before we go into the technicals, because there's more interesting stuff to discover on the technicals. So first of all, as we said, the retailers are again are not getting more bullish now. No, they're getting more bearish, which, which tells us, okay, we stay absolutely bullish on the Swiss franc. Now, what do we see in terms of valuation model versus the dollar here? You see, we, we discussed that we were coming from undervalued. Now we slowly, obviously, we are getting, well, you see, we are moving from undervalued higher, but we are not even a around the mean and not, I mean not even close to overvalued where we would expect once we are overvalued where we would expect more like a retracement happening or a shift in trend or shift in price but we are not even close there so still very very bullish here in terms of valuation model as well and when we look at our campus algo forecast which is our seasonal forecasting tool with a twist here. We talked about this last week as well. We expect 
um, more bullishness or actually the bullishness only to start actually we started already being bullish but based on our forecasting model you see the bullishness continues until until basically almost end of june so all fundamentals remain super bullish and if we look at our campus smart money index with which is derived from the cut data this tells us that well, the retailers are getting more bearish and the concept is clear. Retailers are always wrong. So we remain bullish. And technically, so now fundamentally everything remains the same. Really strong fundamentals for the Swiss franc. Now, if we look at technicals, now pure price action. And we can see this here on the weekly chart as well. And you see this in a second on the weekly USD Swiss franc as well. So the Forex chart in a second, but now we, we, we explore this on the futures here. So we have a bullish weekly and gold. We have a bullish weekly and gold thing. So that's the mother of all uh, price action reversal candles here. So also the technicals are on our side. We are coming from weekly, monthly demand. Plus now from that level, we have a reversal candle as well, a weekly reversal candle, a weekly bullish engulfing candle. So I would expect this for now, the end of the band, right? The trend is your friend until the end of the band. And we here, and we here anticipated the end of the band, ladies and gentlemen. Now, let's go to the next question because now we clearly see well we continue to be bullish on the swiss franc now the question is so how do we do trade management based on that information all right so entry clear targets target clear so for me i also a question that i got asked is are you taking partials um, or just one target for me literally what works the best based on my data is one target basically in quote unquote hit or miss one target yes i do trade management but i never never take partials for me it just doesn't make any sense whatsoever now first of all as a we need mechanical rules for trade management this is really important so i give you a few rules that you can apply here as well and it's really then based on your personal preference now, for me now, the only thing that I do, because, because price hit already one-to-one, -one, for me, one-to-one -one means that I move my stop loss just to my break-even point. My break-even point is obviously my entry. So I move that red line, basically. I move that red line to break-even, more or less, all right? So this is how I just visually quickly show you how I would do this then as well here now style all right so uh, so I would move it a little bit because now remember that's also a pair we, where we pay high swaps unfortunately it is what it is so so you don't want to have it fully on break even so you want to include the swaps so depending on um, how much swaps you paid so far it's, this is where you are basically put your uh, stop loss so you cover the swaps as well. So if in whatever happens, right, the market is still, the market meaning is to a certain degree unpredictable. Everything what we do is probability, nothing is for certain. So that's why um, when you move your stop loss to break even, make sure you move your stop loss to a point where you cover the swaps as well in case the market comes back and maybe even retest that supply level and if it does well i'll do another update because again we would short the usd swiss franc again or in other words go uh, long the swiss franc futures so we hit basically now here this is just support and that support level is now also exhausted. I could, 
I could, I could, I could do a video at some point about this as well. The difference about supply and demand so versus support and resistance and why supply and demand is clearly superior to, um, to support and resistance. But what I want to show is basically is that just that this is now, this is now exhausted because this was demand. This is here the, the original demand level. It hit once, twice, three times, four times. So it ate up all unfilled orders. So the next time it comes down, it will break through that area and below that area is literally nothing. This is all air. There is nothing here almost until our target. Yes, there's the wider version starts here in a way, but still I would expect this to go lower. We will see once price goes there. But once we break this, you will see that most likely once we break this support area below that is nothing. This is pure air. Then we will, this will go really quickly down there. This will not stair step down. You will see that this will go really quickly down here. Now, we talked about moving stop loss. So for me, that's basically it here, right? So moving my stop loss to break even and let it run. Now, what else you could do is now once price continues to go lower, right? Once price continues to go lower here, what you can do is if like something like this happens, I'm just Right. We don't know, but when something like this happens, you can go to a lower time frame. Now let's go to a four hour chart, 240 minute chart here quickly. And what you could do is now move your stop loss. You see here, this is also a mechanical rule, by the way, that you say you you trade you trail based on supply and demand. So you always when there's a now we are short. So and we want new supply to be created because created because that's an obstacle for price to basically go through. It's great that we have here new supply zone. By the way, that 240 minute supply zone is quite neat that you can short as well. If you do like here preferred version, it's quite neat. So if price really comes back into that supply zone here, you see drop base drop, we would well, potentially short again this one. And this is how you could add on, by the way, as a um, position when your initial stop loss is at break even, but I don't want to overwhelm you with so much information right now. So what you could do is as well, you could move your stop loss then at some point above, you know, here, this supply zone because you would expect price to go into that supply zone and then continue to drop and whenever there's a new supply zone being created you can then move your stop loss above the next supply zone so this is how you mechanically and so on and so forth so always you move your stop loss above the next supply zone that is being created and now we do this on a smaller time frame on a 240 minute chart and if you want to trail more tight tightly what you're going to do is you would go to a 60 minute chart and then trail based on 60 minute supply here all right so this is what we're going to do is once price if price comes close to our target down here we would then trail based on a lower time frame chart because obviously we don't want if price goes to 2.5 to 1 r um, uh, risk to reward so we don't want to price go back all the way to one hour or something like this right and we want to secure at least two hours but this is then how you trail so now at one to one the rules are clear at one to one we move our stop loss to break even that what happened include the swaps and then you can start trailing based on supply zones so putting your stop loss always above a newly created supply here i would use four hour chart 240 minute chart and if you want to trail more tightly then you can trail based on a 60 minute chart all right ladies and gentlemen so i don't have yet i mean i have a few trades um 
that I also would like to take in on the in well um, in the challenge. But let's first see how this uh, trade starts, and then maybe midweek, midweek beginning of next week, um, I will um, call the next trade ideas. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's it from my side. All the best, good luck, and talk to you soon.